It was set to redefine naval warfare, yet it was so costly and controversial that it nearly sank before it sailed. The Zumwalt-class destroyers were envisioned as the future of the U.S. Navy, a stealthy, powerful fleet of super destroyers. But with their groundbreaking technology came skyrocketing costs and unforeseen challenges, leaving many to question. Was this billion-dollar program a colossal failure, or are these ships poised to become the warships of the future? Let's start from the beginning. The origins of the Zumwalt-class destroyers are rooted in the strategic shifts that took place in the post-Cold War era, a time when the United States Navy was reassessing its future needs in a rapidly changing global landscape. As the Cold War came to an end in the early 1990s, the U.S. Navy found itself at a crossroads. The massive naval fleets and heavily armored battleships that had once been essential to countering the Soviet threat were becoming less relevant in a world where conflicts were increasingly characterized by regional disputes and unconventional warfare. It was within this context that the surface combatant for the 21st Century Program, or SC-21, was born. Launched in 1994, this program was designed to develop a new generation of warships that could meet the evolving needs of the Navy well into the 21st century. The primary goal was to create a fleet of ships that were not only capable of dominating in traditional naval engagements, but also versatile enough to provide support in coastal and littoral environments. The Zumwalt-class destroyers were envisioned as the centerpiece of this new strategy. The Navy wanted a ship that could operate in multiple roles, capable of land attack, anti-aircraft, and anti-submarine warfare, all while incorporating cutting-edge stealth technology. The Navy's expectation was that these ships would not only replace older vessels, but also lead the way in naval innovation for decades to come. But as it turns out, things didn't quite go according to plan. As we'll see, this ambitious project eventually led to significant challenges, including technological hurdles and budgetary constraints, which ultimately completely reshaped the program and its place in the U.S. Navy's fleet. The program, initially expected to deliver 32 ships, was scaled back dramatically, with only three ships completed. The cost of each ship ballooned far beyond initial estimates, making the Zumwalt class one of the most expensive naval programs in history. Just a quick moment before we unveil the rest. If you're new here, consider subscribing to this channel. Stay up to date and never miss out on the latest insights. Before analyzing the challenges the Navy faced, let's first take a closer look at the technology that these destroyers brought to the table. One of their most striking features is their stealth capability, which was a major focus of the design. Traditional warships have a large radar cross-section, making them easily detectable by enemy radar systems. However, the Zumwalt was engineered to be as stealthy as possible, reducing its radar signature to that of a much smaller vessel. This was achieved through a unique tumble-home hull design, where the sides of the ship slope inward as they rise from the waterline. This design helps deflect radar waves away from the source, dramatically reducing the ship's radar profile. The hull's angular shape, combined with the use of radar-absorbent materials, further enhances the ship's stealth capabilities. As a result, despite its massive size over 600 feet long and displacing nearly 16,000 tons, the Zumwalt class appears on radar as a small fishing boat. This level of stealth was unprecedented for a ship of its size and was intended to give the destroyer a significant advantage in evading detection by enemy forces, particularly in contested coastal regions where the ship might operate close to shore. Another groundbreaking aspect is the Integrated Power System, or IPS. Unlike traditional warships where separate systems generate power for propulsion and other onboard needs, the IPS allows for all of the ship's electrical power to be generated by a single, integrated system. This means that the power generated by the ship's turbines can be distributed more flexibly, allowing for more efficient operation and the potential to power future advanced weapon systems, such as electromagnetic railguns or laser weapons. The IPS also plays a key role in reducing the ship's crew size. One of the goals of these destroyers was to minimize the number of personnel required to operate the ship, thereby reducing operational costs over the vessel's lifetime. Thanks to the advanced automation made possible by the IPS and other onboard systems, the Zumwalt class requires a crew of only about 158 sailors, including the air wing. This figure can vary, but this is significantly less than the 300-plus crew members required for Arleigh Burke class destroyers. Speaking about armament, these destroyers are equipped with an impressive array of advanced weaponry and systems. The ship's primary armament includes 80 vertical launch system, 
VLS cells, capable of launching a variety of missiles such as Tomahawk cruise missiles, SM-2, SM-3, and SM-6 surface-to-air missiles. These VLS cells provide the Zumwalt with the ability to engage air, surface, and subsurface threats, making it a multi-mission warship. Additionally, the ship is fitted with two Mark 46 Mod 2 gun weapon systems, 30mm automated cannons designed to protect against small, fast-moving surface threats such as speedboats and drones. These guns complement the destroyer's missile capabilities by providing close-in defense. The advanced radar and sensor systems, including the ANSPY-3 multifunction radar, offer superior detection and tracking capabilities. However, central to the warship's intended role in naval warfare was the Advanced Gun System, or AGS. The AGS was designed to provide precise, long-range naval gunfire support, filling the gap left by the decommissioning of the Navy's battleships. Each Zumwalt-class destroyer was equipped with two 155mm AGS cannons, capable of firing the Long-Range Land Attack Projectile, or LRLAP. This munition was a rocket-assisted, GPS-guided shell designed to hit targets up to 100 nautical miles away with pinpoint accuracy. The AGS was envisioned as a key component of the ship's mission, providing fire support for ground troops during amphibious operations or striking high-value targets from a safe distance offshore. But as we'll see shortly, it never entered into service. Additionally, the Zumwalt was once considered a potential platform for electromagnetic railguns, thanks to its powerful Rolls-Royce turbine generators that produce 78 megawatts of electricity, sufficient to power such a weapon. However, the railgun program encountered significant technical and budgetary challenges, leading the U.S. Navy to deprioritize the project. In 2021, the Navy ceased funding for railgun development, with no plans to continue the project, effectively shelving the idea of deploying railguns on the Zumwalt-class destroyers. Now, let's start addressing the problems that these ships faced. First up is the advanced gun system and its ammunition which proved to be a major stumbling block. The long-range land attack projectile, despite its technological sophistication, became prohibitively expensive. Initially, each shell was expected to cost around $35,000. But when the number of Zumwalt-class ships was drastically reduced from 32 to just three, the economies of scale that would have made the LR lap affordable disappeared. The cost per round skyrocketed to nearly $1 million, a price that rendered the system impractical for widespread use. Without affordable ammunition, the AGS lost its primary function, leaving the Zumwalt-class destroyers with advanced guns that had no viable munitions to fire. And since the AGS barrels and the associated loading system were engineered exclusively for the LR lap, the system could not use standard 155 ammunition, despite the caliber being common in other U.S. military artillery systems. This setback forced the Navy to rethink the role of the Zumwalt-class ships, ultimately shifting focus away from their intended fire support mission. In addition to the challenges with the AGS, the Zumwalt program also faced significant hurdles in integrating new technologies like the Total Ship Computing Environment Infrastructure, or TSCEI for short. The TSCEI was an ambitious attempt to create a fully integrated, highly automated system that would control all of the ship's functions, from navigation and weapon systems to communications and damage control. This level of integration was unprecedented in naval vessels and required the development of entirely new software and hardware systems. But integrating such a vast array of systems into a single, cohesive network proved to be more difficult than anticipated. The need for custom software, combined with the challenges of ensuring cybersecurity and system reliability, led to delays and increased costs. The ambitious nature of the TSCEI also contributed to the overall complexity of the ship, making it more challenging to maintain and operate than traditional destroyers. These issues further complicated the development process, pushing the Zumwalt program behind schedule and inflating its budget. So, as you might expect, from its inception, the program was consistently overshadowed by financial and political challenges that ultimately reshaped its scope and ambitions. The financial pressures on the Zumwalt program became apparent as early as the late 1990s. Initially, the Navy projected that each Zumwalt-class destroyer would cost about $1.3 billion. However, as the program progressed and the complexities of integrating advanced technologies became clear, 
costs began to soar. By 2005, the estimated cost per ship had ballooned to over $3 billion, nearly triple the original estimate. This drastic increase was due in part to the expensive and unproven technologies being developed for the ship, including the advanced gun system and the integrated power system, both of which required significant investment in research and development. These escalating costs triggered a critical moment in the program's history when it breached the Nunn-McCurdy Amendment. This U.S. law mandates that Congress must be notified if a military program's costs exceed 25% of the original estimate, and if the overrun exceeds 50%, the program must be reevaluated or canceled unless the Secretary of Defense can justify its continuation as essential to national security. By 2009, the Zumwalt program had exceeded its budget by 81%, far surpassing the Nunn-McCurdy threshold. This breach forced a reevaluation of the program, and it became clear that the Navy could no longer afford to pursue the original plan of building 32 ships. The breach brought the program under intense scrutiny from both political leaders and military strategists. Critics questioned whether the Navy was investing in the right type of ship for future conflicts, particularly as the strategic focus shifted towards more versatile and cost-effective platforms. The Zumwalt class, with its advanced but costly systems, was increasingly seen as a luxury that the Navy could ill afford, especially in a time of tightening defense budgets and shifting global priorities. Within the military, debates raged over the value and necessity of these destroyers. Some argued that the ship's advanced capabilities, particularly its stealth design and precision firepower, were essential for maintaining naval superiority in the 21st century. Others, however, pointed out that the Zumwalt's high cost and the uncertain effectiveness of its untested technologies made it a risky investment. These critics favored a return to more proven designs, such as the Arleigh Burke-class destroyers, which were already serving effectively in the fleet and could be produced at a fraction of the cost. The combination of these financial and strategic pressures led to a pivotal decision in 2009 to building only three ships. This decision marked a significant shift in the Navy's approach, as the focus moved away from the high-risk, high-reward Zumwalt class and back towards the tried-and-true Arleigh Burke-class destroyers. But the story of the Zumwalt isn't over yet. This ship still has plenty to prove. The U.S. Navy is actively exploring new strategic opportunities, particularly in advanced weaponry. A major part of this reimagining involves integrating conventional prompt strike, or CPS hypersonic missiles, into the Zumwalt class. In 2022, the Navy awarded a contract to Lockheed Martin Space Systems to begin integrating these hypersonic weapons aboard the three destroyers. Building on this effort, in 2023, the Navy granted a contract to Huntington Ingalls Industries to handle the necessary ship modifications and production logistics required to support these systems. This upgrade will replace the ship's twin 155mm advanced gun systems with four multiple all-up round canisters, each capable of carrying three CPS missiles for a total of 12 hypersonic boost glide missiles. The CPS system will enable the Navy to launch non-nuclear projectiles from sea or underwater platforms over distances of approximately 1,720 miles. The CPS shares its projectile, the common hypersonic glide body, with the U.S. Army's long-range hypersonic weapon. Recent developments have confirmed that the first AGS was removed from the USS Zumwalt at Ingalls Shipbuilding in May 2024. This marks a key step in the installation of the 12 CPS hypersonic missiles, significantly enhancing the ship's strike capabilities. The financial investment in these upgrades is substantial, with each ship's modifications estimated to cost around $1 billion. The first conversion is already underway and is expected to be completed by 2025. This timeline reflects the Navy's urgency to bolster its strike capabilities, particularly in the Pacific, where strategic competition with China, home to one of the world's most advanced anti-access area denial networks, is intensifying. However, it's important to note that the common hypersonic glide bodies being developed jointly by the Navy and the U.S. Army are still highly experimental. So, it remains to be seen if they will be fully operational and readily available within the next year. In addition to serving as platforms for hypersonic missiles, the destroyers are being used as test beds for future naval technologies. A key part of this modernization effort involves Raytheon Technologies Corporation, which is enhancing the total ship computing environment infrastructure. 
This $38.5 million contract, announced in June 2024, aims to upgrade critical hardware and systems. The project is scheduled for completion by May 2027, reflecting the Navy's commitment to maintaining the Zumwalt class at the forefront of technological innovation. So, the story of the Zumwalt class destroyers is far from over, but it stands at a pivotal crossroads. Once seen as a billion-dollar gamble on the brink of failure, these ships are now being reimagined as a cornerstone of the Navy's future. Yet the question remains, will the Zumwalt class fulfill its promise or will it serve as a cautionary tale of ambition outpacing reality? The advanced gun system, once touted as a game-changer, has proven to be an expensive misfire, leaving these advanced ships with powerful guns but no viable ammunition. Now, the Navy is betting on hypersonic missiles, a promising technology, but one that is still far from operational. So, the uncertainty lingers. Can the Zumwalt class truly redefine naval warfare, or will it remain an ambitious experiment that never fully lived up to its potential?